to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast once a week and I pay th tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breasts and prayed. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning we actually have one of my favorite gospel passages, particularly as a priest. You know, it's one of the rare passages that before the parable, it tells us exactly what the purpose is, to point out that those who are self-righteous are in the wrong state of mind. And it's a very easy and very descriptive passage in which the Pharisee, of course, the supposed man of God, goes into the temple, what we would consider our church today, and presents himself to the Lord and praises himself. Thank you, Lord, that I am so good, that I'm not like these people, and that just in case you don't know, this is what I do. In the complete opposite end of the temple, back where the Sacred Heart of Jesus statue is, the tax collector, the sinner who knows what he's done has been wrong before God, can't even lift his head up to look to heaven. One of my favorite lines: "He knows he's wrong." He goes in a humble way, seeking God's mercy. That I am weak, and I can't even look up to you, but I seek your forgiveness and strength. That, my friends, is one of the lessons that we teach at Holy Cross, and that our students receive at all Catholic schools. Because first and foremost, our education in these places is not rooted simply in academics, but in Christ, the scriptures, geared towards not success in our business and making money, but the salvation of souls. Because as I tell my students over and over, my parishioners, God will not care how much money you have in your bank account, how many titles you have, or how popular you are, when your individual day of judgment comes, if you did not live up to the standards, the commands that he's given us, no matter what age you are. And so Catholic education is so important today, particularly in our world, where the word entitlement is really the driving force. I am me, therefore I deserve it. No. You are nothing but a sinner before God who should seek out his mercy and strength. But that's what our children need to hear. They don't need to be told, oh, you could do whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. No. 
We need to live in a world of reality with the knowledge that at the end of our life, judgment awaits us. Because if we fail to pass that message on, we are losing souls. And so at Holy Cross, we are first and foremost centered on Christ. No matter what the topic is, what the subject is, the entire experience at Holy Cross is about the formation of disciples of Christ who are knowledgeable and prepared to enter into this world in all aspects, morally, academically, and faithfully. And as we do this, we are carrying on the tradition that we've been handed for the formation of disciples. And let me tell you something, at Holy Cross, I'm sure you've heard, right, we had a transition last year from an diocesan school to an independent Catholic school here in Burlington County. And what a difference a year has make, made. Last year was tough. It was crazy. And in one year, our freshman class is up 27%. Our athletics are doing great. Our school spirit is there. We were four weeks into the new semester this fall, and I was like, did we start already? It's been such an easy transition into the second year because of the commitment of our students, our families, and our alumni. It's been absolutely amazing. I now am not only the chaplain there, but I teach juniors as well. And juniors in their religion class is morals, which is pretty ironic that I teach it because for those of you that know me, before I was a priest, I was a politician. He's got a sense of humor, right? So I'm there every day to reinforce our Catholic faith with a priestly presence. You know, we have a great academic setup, and our college uh, block scheduling is a really great asset that we have. Each student only has four classes per semester, as they will in college. And then in January, it switches over to another four classes. So the classes are an hour and 15 minutes rather than 45, which really means 30, when everything else is said and done. And in the middle of the day, we have what's called flex, a full hour lunch period in which clubs and activities can meet and so they don't conflict with our sports. So you can be in the club during the day and basketball in the afternoon or football, or baseball, whatever it is you wanna play. But I will tell you, for me as a priest, it is the Catholic formation that is the most important. And I've seen the fruits from our students that are there now and have graduated. So many have come back to me, Father, you know what? We didn't quite get it when I was in high school, but now I do. And I'm doing this and I'm not doing that. Please pray for me. Please pray that I continue to make the right choices. And then two of my favorite things that have happened, just to exemplify what it means to have a priestly presence in a school, in a Catholic formation. One of the things that I really emphasize with our students is confession. Now, I never make a student go to confession. A forced confession is a worthless confession. And always, I allow them to go face to face or back to back. I say, you have that right in the church, you have that right in the school. So in my second semester, my first year, during flex one day, a couple of our students, juniors, were playing basketball in the gym, and I'm standing there just watching. And they stop, and one of the juniors yells out, hey, Father, when are you doing confessions again? I need to go. <laughs> Got my breath back. And then another guy said, yeah, I need to go too. When can we go? After they picked me up, that two teenagers had just said publicly they need to go to confession. Because here's the thing. I don't get Catholics. Confession is whenever you need it. There's no set times. So I'm always trying to drill that into people, young and old alike. If you need confession, it's now. So I grabbed the two guys, let's go, right now. 
Then over this past summer, one of my students that I had in the spring, now this is late July, in the mid-afternoon, I get a text from her. Father, my family and I went to Mass today. Woo. A teenager going to Mass in July, good thing. And when we got home, we were discussing the Gospel. Okay, can you please what? explain this part to us? That's a good day for a priest. When a teenager is going to Mass and then asking about the Gospel. What does this mean for my life? How do I live this? This is what I'm talking about, the importance of Catholic education. So this Tuesday coming up, the 28th, 6 p.m. till 8 p.m., we have our open house at Holy Cross. And so I want to invite anyone who has a child or grandchild in the sixth, seventh, or eighth grade to come and join us to see the school, to check it out, ask questions. You know, we may never have been on your radar before, but we're here and we're staying. So think about us. Come and visit us, ask the questions. You'll be able to meet all, a lot of our students, faculty, myself, and to explore the school and the compound. Holy Cross has 90 acres of land. It's actually a huge, huge school with what we have. I have a friend of mine who is a uh, chaplain at another high school down the shore. They're in the middle of the town. All their fields are 25 minutes away. So that really adds a complication into their, their life. But for us, we're blessed with 90 acres with all the fields right there off of Route 130 in Del Ran. So I wanna ask you to please consider coming to see us, to ask the questions and pray for us. You know, And because we are also quite blessed that at our school we have a young man who is sitting to my left. He's a senior, Kyle Holler who, after graduation this year, will be entering the seminary for the Diocese of Trenton. So in a number of years, he could be your priest standing right here. This is what Catholic schools produce. This is what we need to continue. We need your prayers, we need your support. After communion, he'll speak to you a few minutes about his experience at Holy Cross and about his next eight years of formation, his devotion, his life to Christ and to you. So continue to pray for him and all young men discerning the priesthood. Just remember, no priest, no Eucharist, no Eucharist, no church. We need young men to consider the priesthood. So consider joining us on Tuesday, pray for us, and remember the importance of Catholic education. Thank you.